Welcome to Free Academic English. I'm Geraldine and today we're going to talk about archaea and bacteria. What? Yeah, archaea and bacteria. Remember we talked about them when we started talking about taxonomy? <laughs> okay, so these are like the most basic life forms and I want to go through all of them for you to know. Archaea really is a new addition. Scientists have really just discovered this kind of living. But what they share with bacteria is that they are both prokaryotic, meaning they don't have cell nucleus in their cells. They are organisms that are one cell. One cell is one organism. They are in different groups because scientists say that they are fundamentally different. So I'm just going to leave it there. I don't know much about archaea, just, just what I told you, but I do know about bacteria. Bacteria spark joy, Marie Kondo. They are prokaryotic organisms, meaning that they don't have a cell nucleus. All the other cells that are called eukaryotes, they do have a cell nucleus and in there, the genetic material. But now archaea and bacteria, they do not have a cell nucleus. But they do have genetic material, just that it's not in a nucleus. And why is this genetic material so important and so defining of them? Because genetic comes from the genes. And the genes, you know, you heard of them? And the genes are the little tiny things that carry the information for every structure and every process in every living thing. In this case, in that one cell. Genes carry the information about the development of each of the structures in an organism, about each of the functions of each structure in the organism. It's everything. But in this case, a whole organism is just a cell. Archaea and bacteria. But we're going to talk about bacteria. This means that one cell is one organism, so it's a fairly simple organism compared to the number of cells that organisms like mammals half, for example. Okay, let's not go to mammals. Let's go to a plant. It's a big difference. These organisms are one organism, one cell. One cell, one organism. I'm talking about bacteria because I know them. I love them. I've worked with them. I've loved them as much as I love cats, dogs, whales, animals in general, as we have started explaining. But when talking about bacteria, their taxonomic history is kind of intricate. That's because at first, nobody really knew they existed. Because they were so tiny that nobody could see them. Well, nobody can see them now, but, you know, now we know they exist, even though we don't see them. Until we see them. Because thanks to the microscope, we can see them. The first classification is none, because they didn't exist. Then when we could see them under the microscope, we started classifying them. Just like we had started classifying animals and plants, which are really easier to classify because we can see them, we can see, because we can see their characteristics in detail. We can see their bones, we can see their flesh, we can see anything, right? And so this was not so easy with bacteria because we could see them under the microscope, but still we couldn't see much, really. The difference is that we see animals and how we classify them is fairly related to what their genes say. So we've discovered later when we discovered genes. But that doesn't happen with bacteria. So what happened first was what we could see them and we could maybe see their shapes. So we started classifying them by shape. But that wasn't enough. So in order to see more characteristics, uh, we started staining them. Because we couldn't analyze them because they were so small. But with the staining, we could get some of their characteristics. That way we could, we, we could differentiate them more and start classifying them more. So you see, the classification of bacteria under taxonomy has been evolving as technology to understand them and to describe them has been evolving as well. All that was okay until we discovered the genes. And the genes are the ones that really tell, tell you what an organism is and how related it is to another. 
So in the end, taxo taxonomy is very is now led by genes. And we, when we started studying the genes of bacteria, we discovered that the first classifications we had made weren't so accurate. That we put some organisms together because they looked alike, but they weren't so genetically related. So scientists are there fighting the fight of how they should classify them, if they should give the original name, if they should change it, if they shouldn't. Let's let them do that. I'm old school. I studied this some years ago. So let's go with the classic old-fashioned classification of bacteria. But I'll show you some pictures so you can understand it better. Basically, the first thing you see under a microscope is the shape. So the most important shapes are capsi, patella, and it's a rod. And then the others, uh, let's say the spiral ones in general. But this doesn't cut it because they have other characteristics. So as I told you, the second characteristic will be the staining. The staining is basically the grand staining. What does that mean? For example, these are rods but they are staying in a way that we can see that they are gram negative. This means that their cell wall has characteristics that define it does this organism. On the other hand, here we have also rods, but as you see, they are in a different configuration, but most importantly, they are staying differently because they are gram positive, meaning that their cell wall is different in this case it's actually thicker and so that way we start classifying all of the bacteria but maybe we will go into this later but not now the worry. well now you know a little bit more about bacteria i hope you like this video thank you for watching please share subscribe comment and i hope to see you soon